Greetings. What business have you? So, this investigation into the Neuhof massacre... It's getting a bit complicated. What have you found out? I tracked down a gang of robbers who recruited killers for Pribislavitz. They know the Horsons who torched Neuhof. That's excellent news. Did you find out any more? So far, not much. If I'm going to infiltrate them, I have to do what they say. That means murdering one of their former cronies, a fellow they call Pius. Apparently he was at Neuhof too. You have to kill a criminal to prove yourself to them? Huh. I don't much like the sound of it. That's not the worst of it. This Pius is hiding out in the monastery pretending to be a novice. I'd have to get inside the cloisters to get at him. <laughs> Good God above, that's another matter entirely. They don't let just anyone into the cloisters, and the abbot won't give up any of the novices. Secular law has no jurisdiction inside the monastery. But this is the second time that something untoward has happened there. First the counterfeiters, now this. I'd be glad to have someone take a look inside. What should I do with Pius once I find him? Don't kill him. Bring him to the bailiff in Rate. He'll interrogate the man and give him a fair trial. It doesn't sound like an easy task, sir. Getting into the cloisters, finding Pius, and then getting him to the bailiff. Far from it, lad. But I have confidence in your abilities. It seems like the only way to find Pius is to join the order. Damned if I know how, though. A bit of meditation and learning would do you good. If it's really the only way to get to him, then you'll have to do it. I'm sorry I can't be of much help. Sadly, my relations with the monastery aren't entirely congenial. You'll have to figure something out for yourself. God be with you. Good day to you. Are you Carl by any chance? I am. Why do you ask? I've heard that you're bound for the monastery. Yes, yes, it's true. But I've convinced my faithful guardian, Manfred, to give me a few more days of freedom. Mind you, he won't let me visit the brothel. So instead, I'm devoting those days to the demon drink. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? My name is Henry. Pleased to meet you, Henry. What if I entered the monastery instead of you? I would give you your weight in gold, if I had any. But Manfred there, my guardian angel and caretaker, has all the coin. And he never takes so much as a single step away from me. If you help me get rid of him... Um, he's been listening to us the entire time. So what? Listen. Friend, let's raise a glass. Manfred here is a sleepy old goat. We can talk once he dozes off. Please, get rid of him for me any way you can. Farewell. What? Are you volunteering to get your head smashed in? You see that old man sitting at the table with the young lord? He said something about your mother. I think whore was the word he used. What? He's not getting away with that! Boy, <coughs> old man, what did you say about... I said, what did you say about my dear old man? If she's as repulsive as you, I have no reason to speak of her at all. Now leave me alone before I put you in your place. Put me in my place? I'd like to see you try. I gotta smash your face in, old man. Oh, dear me. I'll 
be better Manfred's than taken care of, just as you wanted. Thank God. He won't let me out of his sight for a second, and he's itching to get me in the monastery so he can head back home. Why are you being sent to the monastery? Like every lusty young lad, I'm fond of fair maidens, but I got too fond of one, and let's just say she was, um, indisposed for nine months. But they don't send you to the monastery for that. They do, when it's the daughter of the Lord of your feet. Shit. Shit is putting it mildly. The Lord of Bukova was less than pleased. He knows he'll never marry off his daughter now, so he gave father a choice. Either pay him 1,000 groschen in compensation, along with my balls on a silver platter, or pay 1,000 groschen and put me away somewhere no one will ever see me again. Why does your guardian never leave your side? So I don't run away. Of course, I'm free to walk around, but he watches every step I take and won't stop until I'm behind the monastery walls. Well, he's not watching you now. What good is that to me when he has all the money and even my saddle and riding cloak under lock and key? What if I entered the monastery instead of you? What? Voluntarily? You don't look like someone who'd want to spend the rest of his days on his knees praying. But that's your problem. You could only enter the monastery if you know how to read and write, and if you have a special writ from the abbot. That's a letter confirming they know who you are and that they've accepted you. So you give me your writ? I'll just tell them I'm you. Manfred has the writ. You'd have to take it from him, but he only puts it down when he sleeps. So I'll steal it and then you can disappear. Disappear? Bear asked, what the hell would I do? I don't know how to work, I have no money, and that old bastard's even taken my cloak. He has me in the palm of his hand. But there are poor people everywhere and they get by somehow. If I have to choose between hunger and poverty on one hand and the monastic life on the other, I'm afraid the monastery wins. If I could only steal that old man's pouch, I'd be gone faster than lightning and no one would ever see me again. Why don't you just run away? Bear asked, what the hell would I do? I don't know how to work, I have no money, and that old bastard's even taken my cloak. He has me in the palm of his hand. But there are poor people everywhere and they get by somehow. If I have to choose between hunger and poverty on one hand and the monastic life on the other, I'm afraid the monastery wins. If I could only steal that old man's pouch, I'd be gone faster than lightning and no one would ever see me again. That's all then. God be with you. Jesus Christ be praised. I'd like to speak to you about something. What's on your mind? I hear you've got a writ signed by the abbot granting entry to the monastery. Indeed I do. What of it? One. I need it. What good would it do you? You don't want to become a monk instead of him, do you? Yes, I do actually. But I'll need that writ to do it. Now that's funny. <laughs> I've never heard such nonsense in my life. The boy must enter the monastery and there's no way around it. If you want to become a monk as well, you'll have to earn your own place. Hand over that writ of acceptance right now, or things will get ugly. Pardon me? I wouldn't give you that writ even if you threatened to kill me. Honor and duty won't allow it. Take care now. What's the hold up there? There's still something I'd like to speak to you about. What's on your mind? But he doesn't want to be a monk. I know. Unfortunately, there's no other way. You see, he gave the Lord of Bukova an unwanted grandchild. He can count himself lucky he wasn't castrated straight away. 
But normally you just need to pay some form of compensation for that sort of offence, don't you? Yes, 1,000 groschen. But a boy would keep chasing after women. And who knows how it would all end. The monastery really is the safest place for him. What if you let him run away? The Lord of Bukova would have me whipped. Karl isn't slipping through my fingers. What if I give you a few shiny groschen for that writ? You dare question my honor? I'm a faithful servant of my lord. Fist up, scoundrel. Good luck to you. Jesus, what do I have to do to get a drink here? Got it for you right here. Christ, thief! People, thief! What the? I've got what you need. Excellent. Give me the purse. You can do as you like with the writ. Here's half the purse. Half? What about the rest? I'm keeping it for my efforts. Well, I can't say that seems fair to me, but what can I do? Take care now. I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Weren't you supposed to come here with your guardian? It's been so hectic lately, people will keep turning up out of the blue. He... he got drunk last night and wasn't able to come with me today. Such irresponsibility. And you share his guilt for abandoning him. Although, of course, inebriation is a sin. Well, we'll see. Can you read and write? Naturally. I wouldn't be here otherwise. So then, are you ready to enter the Order of St. Benedict and renounce forever the temptations of this world? I am. Then you must rid yourself of all your worldly possessions. Sell them or give them to the poor and needy or donate them to the monastery. You may not enter this place burdened by worldly goods. Inside the gatehouse is a trunk in which you will find monks' robes. Put away all your possessions and dress yourself in the habit. Then you may rest a while, while I go and see the prior to arrange matters for your acceptance. Farewell. Strange feeling being without all of that. I didn't realise how much I'd grown used to it. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life.
brothers in Christ, we have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, obedientia, obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum et vivam. Et non confundas me, ab expectatione mea. Suski pe me domine secundum in loquium tuum et vivam in loquium tuum vivam et, et non confundas me ab expectatione Accept your new name, Brother Gregor, and wear it with honor. Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? Being here in the monastery is my dream come true. Being a monk is so... so exciting. <laughs> well, no one's ever said that before. I'm curious if you'll still be singing the same tune in a month's time. Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite... unexpected. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. This is the way to the dormitory, where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. It takes a bit of getting Salve. used to. Salve. Be well.
This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, Saint Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> so beware. Here are the fratery and scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora, pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior and the circators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory, where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of Saint Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, expect a swift punishment. But I've already told you about the circuit. The library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty. But tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We'll be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. Will you tell me something about yourself? There's not much to tell. I lived in Vlashim, and after my father died, I found out I wasn't much of a merchant. So I left the shop to my brother and decided to become a monk. It's peaceful here. There's food and lots of time to read. So you chose to come here? It may seem strange, but I'm one of the few novices that did. I might be the only one. The truth is, the idea of spending my life in a monastery was more appealing than being cooped up in a greasy old shop. It occurs to me you might be the man to ask. I'm looking for some lockpicks. Do you know anyone in the monastery who could help me? Lockpicks? You surprise me, brother. And you, a nobleman's son. But you could ask Brother Solarius. They say he used to be a thief. I need to make a confession. I'm no priest, but tell me what you've done. It's probably nothing to worry about. I'm here in the monastery looking for a thief. He had a hand in burning down the Neuhof stud. You don't say. And who are you to take such an interest? Someone whose job it is to investigate the case Find the perpetrators and make sure they get the punishment they deserve. Punishment? Do you intend to punish them here, in the monastery? I don't know yet. I'm still just on their trail. Perhaps you could help me find him? The missing thief? If I knew anything, I'd tell you. But I suppose it must be one of the novices. I've only recently heard about the Neuhof incident. And all the other brethren have been here much longer than that. I know. Aside from me, there are only four novices, but still, I don't know which one he could be. Three? Please, leave me out of it. And you're right that it could be any one of them. No one knows anything about Lucas. Siskin might be a lot of things, but a monk isn't one of them. And Yodok is a slimy worm. It wouldn't surprise me if he was behind that massacre. Actually, the more I think about it, the less I like that Yodok. He's a treacherous rat who'd do anything to get in someone's good books. The thought of Yodok at Neuhof since chills up my spine. <sighs> Maybe you're right. It's not a pretty thought. Thanks for your help, and please don't say a word to anyone. Don't fret, my friend. Your secrets are locked inside my lips. <laughs>